Every time we calculate weighted average cost of capital, WAC, we need to use market value, not book value. But in order to calculate market value of equity and market value of debt, we need to use some formulas. So what will be the formula of market value of equity? Remember, market value of equity is also called market capitalization, market cap. So market cap or market value of equity is the same. Therefore, how do we calculate market value of equity? It's our share price multiplied by shares outstanding, which is the number of shares. How are we going to calculate market value of debt? Market value of debt will be our book value of debt multiplied by trading percentage. So I will get the debt from our balance sheet, our total debt, and then I multiply it by trading percentage. Let's get an example about it. Sigma Limited has a book value of debt of $50 million, trading at 90% of book value. It has book value of equity of $50 million and 10 million outstanding shares, trading at $5.5 .5 per share. The pre-tax cost of debt is 6%, the cost of equity is 10%, and the tax rate is 30%. So the first part of the question is we need to calculate market value of equity, then market value of debt then market value of asset, then the weight of debt, then the weight of equity, then after tax cost of debt, then pre-tax work, then after tax work. So let's get the values we have first. So what we have clearly given is our before tax cost of debt, which is 6%, and our cost of equity, which is 10%. So let's solve the first part of the question. Calculate the market value of debt. So what will be the market value of debt? It's our book value of debt multiplied by the trading percentage. In the question, we had book value of debt of 50 million. The trading percentage is 90%. So 50 million times 90%, it will give us 45 million. So in our table, under the amount, the dollar value here, we will put 45 for debt. And remember, this debt refers to the market value, not the book value. The second part of the question is calculate the market value of equity. The formula of market value of equity or market capitalization or market cap is shares outstanding times share price. Therefore, in the question, we had 10 million shares and the share price is 5.5. So this will give us market value of equity of 55 million. So we'll put here 55 million. The next part of the question is calculate market value of asset. We know that market value of asset is market value of debt plus market value of equity. It will give us our market value of asset. Therefore, 45 plus 55, it will give us 100. The next part of the question is calculate the weight of debt, the percentage of debt. So our percentage of debt will be market value of debt divided by the total. So it will be 45 divided by 100, it will give us 45%. We call it the weight of debt or percentage of debt or the share of debt. Remember, in our table here, we have the first one, we put our variables, which is market value of debt, market value of equity. The second column, we put the values in terms of dollars, the amount. Then the third column here, we have the weight or the percentage. The fourth column here, we have the cost, pre-tax cost of debt and cost of equity. Then next column, we have our before tax work. And that's why you put here before tax between bracket. Then we will calculate our after tax cost of debt. And that's why here we put R80. And then the last column will be our after tax work. The next one is calculate the weight of equity. So the weight of equity is market value of equity divided by the total. 55 divided by 100, it will give us 55%. Remember, our percentage of debt or share of debt or weight of debt plus percentage of equity or share of equity or weight of equity must be 100%. If it's not 100%, there is something wrong in your calculation. Then we need to calculate our after-tax cost of debt. How do we calculate after tax cost of debt? We need to get before tax cost of debt, which is 6%, and we need to multiply it by one minus tax rate, which is one minus 30%. So this will give us after tax cost of debt of 4.2%. So I will put it in my table here as 4.2%. And remember that our before tax cost of debt is always bigger than our after tax cost of debt. Why? Because we multiply by one minus tax rate. How will they will be equal if there is no taxes? 
because if I put taxes here as zero, so one minus zero is one, so 6% times one, it will be 6%. So this means that our before tax cost of debt will be equal to after tax cost of debt if we don't have taxes, which is not realistic. In real life, we have taxes. Consequently, before tax cost of debt will always be larger than after tax cost of debt. The next part is we need to calculate our pre-tax WAC or before tax WAC. So what is the formula of pre-tax WAC? It is the percentage of debt times cost of debt plus percentage of equity times cost of equity. How do you calculate percentage of debt? Debt divided by debt plus equity. Here we refer to market values. How are we going to calculate percentage of equity? It's equity divided by debt plus equity. We refer to the market value measures. We already calculated before. Therefore, what we will do is I will get here the percentage of debt multiplied by our before tax cost of debt. So this will give us 2.7%. Therefore, this part is 2.7%. Plus, for equity, I will get the percentage of equity multiplied by cost of equity. 55% times 10%. This part will give us 5.5%. Therefore, what will be our before tax WAC or pre-tax WAC? Get 2.7% plus 5.5%. This will give us 8.2%. Therefore, the total here will be 8.2%. Then we need to calculate our after-tax WAC or post-tax WAC. How are we going to calculate after-tax WAC or post-tax WAC? So our formula will be percentage of debt multiplied by cost of debt multiplied by 1 minus tax rate. Remember, cost of debt multiplied by 1 minus T, this is called after-tax cost of debt plus percentage of equity times cost of equity. We calculate them before. The percentage of debt is debt divided by debt plus equity. Percentage of equity is equity divided by debt plus equity. Therefore, what's our percentage of debt? It's 45% multiplied by after tax cost of debt, which is 4.2. Therefore, if I got 45% multiplied by 4.2%, it will give us 1.89%. Therefore, the first part here is 1.89%. Plus, get the percentage of equity multiplied by our cost of equity, which is 5.5%. We can get it from the table from before tax WAC. Why? Because equity is not affected by taxes. So instead of calculating the second part, I can just put it here as it is. Copy the formula from here and put it here. Therefore, what will be our after-tax WAC or post-tax WAC? I need to get 1.89% plus 5.5%. So this will give us 7.39%. Remember here, which one is larger? Our pre-tax WAC or post-tax WAC? Our before-tax WAC or after-tax WAC? All the time, our before-tax WAC is larger than our after-tax WAC. Why? Because here, with cost of debt, we multiply it by 1 minus t. Because we use, with after-tax WAC, we use after-tax cost of debt. So when z will be equal? Z will be equal if there is no taxes. Because if we put tax here 0, this means that our cost of debt will be the same. Consequently, our before-tax WAC will be the same as after-tax WAC. So if we would like to sum up, we will discover that our before-tax cost of debt or pre-tax cost of debt is always larger than our after-tax cost of debt or post-tax cost of debt. How in Z will be equal if there is no taxes? We can apply the same concept with WAC. Our before-tax WAC or pre-tax WAC will always be larger than our after-tax WAC or post-tax WAC. Why? Because in our calculation of after-tax WAC, we use after-tax cost of debt, which means we multiply cost of debt by 1 minus T. When Z will be equal? Z will be equal if there are no taxes.